God. He always inspires me. I could preach an hour just following him. I'll tell you, he just brings up those nuggets. You know, our journey has a lot of different twists and turns. And uh, I've been encouraged all week. And I was encouraged this morning, all the confusion up here, getting the music department up here and Jerry, I don't know, Jerry, what, what's going on? <laughs> we need to find out. Janice and I uh, went out for a fish fry. I didn't order fish. <laughs> Others did. And uh, we were talking with uh, a couple that uh, was, they were in our church. And she was telling them some stories. And, you know, we all have a story, right? Amen. And uh, I was just telling someone, uh, Dave spoke to my heart last week. He said, you got to die, man. you got to die. So now I have something else I have to work on. And Jerry spoke to me a few, about a month ago. He said, be careful who you hang around with. So I always look at the people we get together with, and I'm just wondering. Come to the church and see you, and I think, wow, should I hang around with you? <laughs> well, praise God. Whenever you're under the umbrella of God's word, this is like an umbrella here. I'm so happy George got that fan going the right way. And uh, I was just thinking about, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago or a week ago, I. Uh, Janice was telling these folks, she said, yeah, Gary, uh, he really messed up this past week. He was up there and it was time to close the service and, oh, there I go talking about my wife again. She was talking about me. And uh, he goes off singing, the redeemed of the Lord shall return. It wasn't the right time. And uh, I was inspired. Deb picked the right music. I had the song in my heart. And uh, so I went with it. And, uh, and then we talked about David. When we talk about people here and people we know, we always talk about the good things. I said, this guy is really, he's got some real good thoughts. He brings them. I'm getting disappointed in old Napa stories. <laughs> they kind of take me through the rest of the week. I have a story I can tie in with that. And, uh, and so, uh, talking about uh, how he comes up with these experiences from his job, you know, there's things that you can share with people, hoping that you can open the door to their hearts. Uh, Revelation 3.20, I believe, says, Jesus said, I stand at your heart's door, and I knock. Think about that. He's telling you, you go out there, I'm at their heart's door, and I'm knocking. And it's for you, Deb said something that I can tie into, about the birds singing in the garden. And she's thinking about their singing, but they're, she's feeling, she may be feeling, I have to start turning over the soil. And I have to plan what I want to plan. John said to me when I came in, we were talking about something, and he said, uh, March is right around the corner. John, praise God. Things are happening. Amen? Amen. Are you excited about things in life? You should be. If you're upright, you're breathing, give thanks to the Lord. He has a purpose for you. Amen. Yeah. And uh, so... There's people gone this morning. Oh, yes. The Lord spoke to me this morning. And you may say, well, how come he speaks to you and not to us? Well, he does speak to you. You're just not listening. Maybe. Or maybe you hear him, but you don't know how to deal with that, what you heard. Or do you contribute that to God speaking to you? I don't know how you picture, how you see how God speaks to us. Number one, the main way He speaks to you is through His Word. Would you agree? Yes. Through the Bible. Remember I told you about the bank 
If you have a checking account, you have to put money in the, the bank in order to write checks, right? Right. Yep. You have to put the word in for so that you can have a withdrawal. And so there are people that are not here that I really felt that this was directed maybe to them. At least I know one might, maybe. So, here's my point. And that's what you've been praying for. I hope it gets to the point. Here's the point. If I'm going to share this scripture, this thought that God gave me, and it may apply to you as an individual, oh, he, uh, they touched on it. Are you dealing with any battles in your life? Are you dealing with any battles in your mind? You know, we all have areas that pop up. You think, well, oh, I got saved. I thought it was now going to be, I could just kick back and everything was going to be fine. No, no, there's going to be battles ahead. Even now, when we go to the Roman road, I'm going to require you that you put on the helmet of salvation. You've got to renew your mind. And so, uh, are there battles on the horizon in your life? Well, and then he said there's encouragement. Uh, he said a lot of good things, so I took my notebook out and I wrote it down because from there to here, a lot of times it just... And uh, so I do have a thought. So here I am listening to gospel music, just instrumental music, and it was beautiful. I don't know where the scenery came from. Oh, I just take me there. You created all this for us to enjoy. And I've traveled a lot of places in my life, and I'm thankful for that. But I'm, you see things and you hear things that, how could I have missed that? This is wonderful. And so over in Isaiah 41, if you want, either write it down. Uh, and I want to encourage you to pass this on. If you don't pass it on, change, change to you. And uh, verse 13, there's the, how many of you believe in prophecy? How many of you know what prophecy is? It's an inspiration of God's word given to a man or a woman to speak out, not only for themselves, but for others. Now, if you hear it and it encourages your heart or lifts you up, or whatever it does to you, embrace it. Write it down, go back, look at it again, and ponder it. It will bring healing and uh, bring whatever God wants to bring to your life. And in Isaiah 41, it was as clear, I, tears came to my eye, and I was praying, I said, Lord, thank you. I haven't been inspired in this way for a long time. But maybe we're settling in here. We're all on the same page. Romans chapter 1 through 7, aren't we? At least I hope you've been following that pattern of the study. And so in Isaiah 41, it came to my mind, 13, For I, the Lord your God, will hold you, your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Let me read it again. For I, the Lord your God, will hold you, hold your right hand, saying to you, saying to you, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. Father, I thank you. And whoever that word is for or how it will speak to hearts here this morning, let it be sealed, sealed in your minds and your hearts, and may they give you the praise and the glory. I believe God spoke to many of you, or, and especially others that are part of this body, and uh, you need to pass that on. Because there's people that are fearing different things that are happening in their life. And, uh, you know, and it says, okay, they meant take take you through a difficult time right now. 
You don't stop there. You keep going. You keep listening for the voice of God. If God speaks to me, he'll speak to you. A scripture will just come from off the page and just grip your heart and your mind and your assurance in him. I could spend a lot of time just talking about different people that brought across my path to speak to. Uh, one lady that was in our church, and I know she's uh, faithful in the Word of God, and she said, I said, well, how are you doing? That was an open entry way to, are you with God? Are you still running the race? And she says, well, I've drifted off. And before she said any more, I said, 11. Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 1, 2. Hebrews 1, uh, chapter 2. Uh, let me go there and I'll just read the scripture. I don't do that for just for you. I do it for me. So that I remember these things. 2, 1. Therefore we must give more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Don't be a drifter. Amen? Amen. Don't be a drifter. Somebody, I want more of God. Is that your prayer? Lord, I need more of your presence in my life. I need your, I need to just fill my cup that it overflows. You know, we have this wonderful worship and we sing these songs. That will only take you for a little while. You need more. You need more of the Word. More of His presence. More of His love. Never quit. Never give up. You keep pressing on. God is good. Amen. <laughs> All the Devil time. Is bad. <clears throat> Did you hear me? Amen. God is good. The devil All the is time. bad. Amen. Amen. And he's not giving up on you. He's going to try to distract you and pull you off. I have a little time in my, in my life that I've lived that I can share these things. I've learned a lot. I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I'm so excited about just coming here and being with you and sharing some of my thoughts and so forth. Uh, I hope they mean something to you. If they don't, well, I try. Open your Bibles and phones. Uh, because we're going to do, I'm going to give you an overview of the scriptures from uh, Romans chapter 1. I like my Bible. Uh, I have many Bibles. I remember in Jan when I got saved and Jan rededicated her life. She got, we had, we had a Bible. She had a Bible, but then we bought another Bible. First someone gave us money, stuck it in our house door, and uh, uh, I don't know why, but there was money there. One morning, got up, opened the, the front door, and there was an envelope, and there was money. We tried to give it away. You know, God gives you things. He blesses you for reasons. You've been praying, oh, Lord, if I only had 20 bucks, I'd buy a new Bible. And da 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 So he, someone gives you 20 bucks. I don't think we ever shared it with anyone. And then you try to give it away. We tried, we tried the hard, we kept trying, we couldn't give it away. Because God gave it to us to buy a Bible. Right, Jen? Do you remember that? What was the translation? It, it was an American <laughs> Standard Version. It was a big study Bible. And oh, it was $50. 50, it was 50, I don't know how much they gave us. They, they, they gave us $50. Yes. And we tried to give it to the, right. the, the, the program on the church grounds. Right. For the, the alcoholics. Yeah. They kept giving it back. Yeah. You're not taking it back. <laughs> All right. God is good. All the time. All right. Turn to Romans chapter 1. And we're going to look at verse 16 and 17. Personally, embrace this. You know, when, when I read a lot of these things, it's like God speaking directly to me. Now, as it spills over out of my life, I'm sharing with you. Any of you wondering why that bag's up here? Yeah. There's a few of you. Okay, we'll get there. <laughs> he inspires me to, to, to stir myself up in my imagination to different lessons that we can learn. I see it, but I, 
some of us that do they get it. That's not your worry. Romans 1, 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And I want to say this to you. That's exactly where we should be in our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. The gospel, if it has changed your life, and if it has encouraged you, has it opened new horizons for you? Has it made you alive that God is in He's the, the God of the heavens and the earth? And He's looking at me. He's touched my life. Do you know this? It is the will of God that all men be saved. Did you know that? Yes, that's true. I wrote that down this morning. I'm making a mess of that thing now. Yeah? He, he wants all men, but all men will not be saved. Because there's some real powerful scriptures that show us some of the what's happening when you reject Christ. Uh, I have a dual title for our message today. The Roman Road or straight street. You can put it wherever you like. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. 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 You have to believe. I stand at your heart's door and I knock. Open the door. You know, I used that talking with people. I said, do you sense that God is speaking to you as I'm sharing the scriptures with you? individuals or thoughts or telling them what happened in my life and how he's transformed me. And then I find out in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man or woman or person be in Christ, he's a new creation. No things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. For the Jew first, they were given the oracles of God. You should pray for them. You should pray for others, but pray for the Jews and then for the Gentiles, that their hearts be open. Sometimes you wonder, what should I be praying about? Pray that God would come, but until he comes, we're going to occupy where we're at, and we're going to proclaim Jesus. We're in, going to encourage one another. We're going to give them hope and assurance. I'm, I'm a testimony that God's power works, and salvation is real. Hallelujah. And I want to testify, and I've shared with others about Jan praying for me, praying over my pillow. That sneaky little woman <laughs> that I would get saved. And so was her mother and dad. And after I got saved, we went immediately to their house, and I fell on the floor, and I was crying out and saying, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. And they said, Oh, we wanted him to get saved. What happened? <laughs> they joined in. We took, sometimes people get saved and they just die on the vine. You don't want to die on the vine. Amen? Amen. You want to be alive. Amen. Sometimes you, you feel like you're dying on the vine. <laughs> sometimes you're using your gifts and you say, Lord, it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. And he said, just put the seed in. I'll make it grow. Mm -hmm. Be patient. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> now, there's a, a writing in Titus that you're all familiar with. I've shared it to, with you in chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God, when we talk about grace of God, that brings salvation. God's grace is His responsibility to bring us all back. Salvation has appeared to all men. All men. It even appeared to Hitler. I doubt very seriously that he heard or was ready to receive. He had evil in his life. I'm sure you know that. Now what is grace? Write this down. Unmerited, unearned, undeserved, freely given, and it is a gift of God to mankind. 
Amen? Amen. 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 Check me out. Don't believe it. Do what Jerry said. Be careful. Check the word, just like Jesus said. Jesus said, beware. In the last day, many deceivers are going to come. Make sure they line up with the Bible. Amen? Yes. Okay, good. And uh, so, grace is from God. Grace, love. God is love. I'll tell you, I have evaluated, I've sought, sat and thought about my life, and I, it's, it's amazing grace that he called me out of darkness into light. And I told others how my wife prayed for me, and she was seeking God, and she, she had made a decision. She was going with God, if I was going with her or not. But she was believing God to change my life, and he did. He did. It was part of it. Verse 17. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written. Now those are important thoughts and phrases that we need to attach ourselves to. It's faith that we receive from God. Romans 12, 3. He has given to us the measure of faith. And in 2 Peter chapter 1, it talks about add to your faith. Add to this and that and that. So you can grow in the things of God. We all stand. God is no respecter of person. What he's done in our life, he'll do in your life. Don't be a complainer, a grumbler. You just stop the flow of God. He doesn't leave you. He just said, button it up. <laughs> if you don't like him, pray for him. Amen. 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 Don't step on their toes. If God says, stay away from them, remember what Jerry said. Be careful who you hang around with. You see, that's engrafted in my mind now. I'm building a message on that. Amen. The just shall live by faith. And we all get the measure of faith. Now, I need a volunteer. Come on up here. And praise. Amy, take what's in that bag. Let me have the bag and just set it up there. Turn it around, though. I don't want them to see it. Yes, thank you. No, you got to put it back where I put it. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Do you know what that is? A puzzle. Huh? A puzzle. A puzzle. Show and tell. You can contribute that to Dave and all his stories. Wipers. <laughs> mice. Stay away from the mice. There's a puzzle. And guess what? It's a thousand pieces. I love it. I won't do it. <laughs> I love it, but I won't do it. I'm a 12-piece puzzle. <laughs> so I went out to buy the puzzle, and there was a young lady that uh, was in the store, and I walked in there, and I said, do you have any puzzles? Oh, we certainly do. I said, leave me. Oh, she says, I'll take you to them. And I said, how nice. I said, I go to Walmart, and they don't do that. <laughs> so she <laughs> let me over to the puzzle check. Yeah. And I did not say, and I have to be honest, give me the most expensive one you have. I said, I, want, I don't want to spend a lot. Mm -hmm. I did spend a lot for that one. That was a, never been open. Some lucky person is going to get that during my time here. Because I'm not going to it. <laughs> and so then we came back, and I'm just showing you how easy it is to share and I said, I'm going to use this, uh, I want to illustrate something, we get back up. And she says, uh, uh, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a pastor. She says, I thought so, I could tell by the way you were talking. <laughs> and uh, I shared some other thoughts with her. I said, yeah, uh, this is where I'm sharing at the Baptist Church in Wood ba uh, Woodland Baptist Church over in Ironwood. 
Now, what was I doing? I was planting a seed that hopefully she may come this way. I don't know if she ever will. But that's my part. Who did you share with this week? Who did you invite? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Or maybe you did in some way and you didn't even recognize it. Don't be doing that. <laughs> and so uh, she said, what's your name? I said, Gary Grable. She said, I'm Mary. Mary in the Bible? No. Mary. <laughs> she grew up with my daughter. Yeah. She said, I have left, I left here 30 years ago and I'm back. I was in Alaska and I came back. <laughs> and she said, and we began to talk and I began to share some things with her and I mentioned more about my daughter. Jan had bumped into her a while back. And, I, and uh, so she said, uh, I said, I'm hoping to create a picture in the people's mind and how our life is like a puzzle. We get a piece here, a piece there. That's why you need a place where you can put a thousand piece uh, puzzle out on a table and you can do a little at a time. You go to, you know, you go to work one day, come back, and uh, you're having a, a, a bad time. Ah, let me go with the puzzle. And you put another piece in there. Amen? Amen. It's just like your gardens, you know. You go in the garden, you do this. Uh, this, there may not be any weeds growing in the, the puzzle realm, as it would a garden. You've got to keep the garden clean. And she said, it's so nice to talk with you. Oh, you, you know, she says, uh, I said, well, I'm, look, I'm older now. And she said, you don't look it. Yeah. I knew right away nothing wrong with her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, thank you. I said, I'm doing well. And so is Jan. And, and uh, it was so nice to talk with you. I told Janice, and, and then we just talked about different things. The first thing you have to do with a puzzle is open the box, right? And then you spread them all out. Some people like to start way over here. Some like to start on this side or the top and so forth. I don't know where you're starting. But you have the handbook. God sent it down through Jesus Christ. He came to fulfill the, uh, the, 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 the Father's heart to bring love to mankind, to get man to be restored back into his grace. He's not against you. Even when you blow it, he's still on your side. Can you say amen? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. And so, if I turn, I might turn this around later on. And you could get a picture of it, and that's a, that's a good picture if you're going to put this puzzle together. But if I didn't let you see the picture, and I said, just put it together, you'd be doing this. Oh, my. What's it? What, what? Look, I made a thousand-piece puzzle. That's a lot of pieces. <laughs> How many believe you could do it? Well, there's three, four, five. Good for you. It just takes patience. It takes a determination. Jan, she pays my numbers. I mean, she'll, she'll be doing it. She'll be in the house. If I could move, you know, cleaning this, cleaning that, lift up your feet, <laughs> and then she'll stop and she'll go over to her table where she has her pictures out there. And then she's, she's all calm. <laughs> I said, uh, she said, well, I'm almost out of paint here. Well, I said, just use it from one or the other. You can't do that. <laughs> and you don't sing the redeemed of the Lord at the end. You pray, follow the order. <laughs> I shake up the order. I didn't mean to do that. They didn't mean to do what they did this morning. Jerry didn't mean to forget what he was up here for. <laughs> but he was here. He served all right. I hope I can help all of us to see the message of the gospel. I have lived many, by the grace of God, 
to the Lord. I have a, 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 a box of men that have come to the Lord. Well, I was in the prison ministry for 40 years. And uh, I would have them have an altar call. People would come up and they would receive Christ into their heart. And I pray for them even to this day. I opened my heart. Which reminded me, I said, I have a, a brother that has a need. And my thoughts were to him. Now, I just like that scripture I read. And I said, well, how do you know that's from God? Do you think the devil would say something like that? <laughs> Come on. And there was a brother that I know who's going through a transition, a need, and I'm praying for him. And I, this scripture came to mind uh, uh, in verse 9 of chapter 1 of Romans. For, the God, for God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Praise God. Huh? I pray for you. There's not many here, so it doesn't, it's not so hot. <laughs> I just go right, I find, I know where you sit. I know what you're doing. You think I don't know what you're doing out there? <laughs> I know what you're doing. And so I text them this morning. I could read the text, but in, in no way am I boasting. In any way. When God in, in touches my heart and says, send a text to this person or that person, I, God, I, I'm, I just want to make sure this is you. Would you say it again? <laughs> no, I just follow it. And I leave it at that. And he said, he said, text me back and he says, thank you, brother. You know when to send the right thoughts or the right word. Praise God. We're ministering all the time. We are the hands and the feet of the Lord. What do you do over there at ba uh, Woodland Baptist or what we sing? We sing songs. We sing songs of praise to the God. You don't really believe that, do you? With all my heart. Amen. With all my heart, I believe it. Just recently, Jan and I were inspired. You know, we had that fellow come in. Remember when that, that Gideon came in here? And maybe you do this. I'm not, we're not comparing. And uh, he brought the message about the Gideons and how they give out Bibles. And I was in remembrance of uh, Bob and Helen, my mother-in-law, father. I loved him, both of them, but Helen was a real, she loved the Lord with all her heart. And I used to stop over to visit with her, and she'd be sitting in her easy chair, and she would be, and she'd say, what do you want? <laughs> what are you here for? I came to see you. Go away. <laughs> and she used to sit in the back when I preach and she'd go like this. <laughs> That's why I went over there. I said, what's this? She says, don't give it all the message to them at one time. Give them a bite at a time. Go away. <laughs> That's true. And then I thought about my own mother and dad. So Jan and I purposed to send the card and send Bibles in remembrance of our loved ones. The best thing you can do, send a Bible. Put it out there in the motels and where people are hurting, hurting, and they have needs and there's battles going on in their life. You know people are committing suicide, alarming rape. We have the answer. Praise God for that. This is Paul. Okay, here's some points. Five points, I believe. No, seven. Uh, Paul's greatest, this is Paul's greatest work, the, the Roman road. It's the first among his 13 epistles in the New Testament. He was a persecutor of the believers of his day. Acts 9, that I referred to last week, says uh, if he found any who were of the way, which re, uh, was what the Christians were called the people of the way, believers in Christ, whether men or women, women, uh, he would bring them bound to the religious leaders of his day. He witnessed the death of Stephen 
and he stood in agreement with his stoning. Can you get the picture? It's like a puzzle. There, I can see him. I can see him in my imagination, my mind. I can see they're stoning Stephen. And Stephen says, Lord, Lord, forgive him. Lord, forgive him. Receive my spirit. He was going out right then. And then he said, Lord, don't hold this against their account. Don't hold this against them. And then the next chapter we hear that what happens to his life, he gets saved. His life is transformed by the power of God. Uh, Romans uses a question and answer format. I'm telling you this so as you're studying it, you will think about these, these thoughts. Look for yourself and then share with others. Can you say amen? Amen. You never know what you're going to do that may help turn someone. That I think I shared with you one time, I walked the gangway of the Gogibbet County Jail. We had a guy that came in and uh, he into the church and then he did something, got locked up. I don't remember. But he said, I got my own way of believing. That was on Thursday, on Friday, he hung himself. Whatever he had, I didn't want. I called to live and live abundantly in Christ Jesus. You, we all have great things to look forward to. Things may look bad, and they are bad. But greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. Three, Paul records the most systematic presentation of the doctrines in the Bible. Doctrines to be lived out, and they're sound doctrines. And you may want to read 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. I could have just given you a chapter, but I want you to get in there and dig in. Get that puzzle working. 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy about why you need good sound doctrine. Now the doctrines that you learn apply to you first of all. If you see another Christian that not living the way you think you should live, leave them alone. Unless God tells you, then he'll say be gentle and loving. Does that make sense? I'm sure it does. Uh, know this, Romans is more than a book of theology. It's a way of life. Five. It's a book of pra practical application of how, when, and where. Live it out daily, not only in the church, but in the marketplace of life. Practice. Practice on yourself. I hope when you look in the mirror in the morning, you don't scream. You look in the mirror and say, Praise God, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. He was made sin for me who knew no sin, that I might become the righteousness of God in him. Oh, praise you. Thank you, Lord. Uh, six. Romans teaches you why we need a Savior. Brings hope, restoration. It will restore you. In John 14, 6, he said, I am the way and the truth. No one comes unto the Father but through me. But then he said, well, I got a different way. And we've heard that. You know, people say, well, I, you know, they say they go to this church. And, That's good for you. You're a brother in law. I don't want to talk about God. That's private. No, it isn't. God said, go out into all the world and tell others about Jesus. If you can't talk about yourself, talk about Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it could be a springboard for something. And if you can't talk about Dave, talk about Jerry. <laughs> Jerry said, be careful who you hang around with. It's in the Bible. Not all have the, the spirit of God or the knowledge of God, nor do they want it. All right. Romans 7, Romans is the good news. Amen. The good news of Jesus Christ. John 3, 16. God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him may be saved. That's good news. Well, one day, just like the thief on the cross, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I'll think about it. Yeah, don't think too long. Right? Amen. Romans is the good news of Jesus Christ, number seven. And it's more than facts to believe. It's also a life to be lived and given or expressed to a lost world. I tell you, you'll never go wrong with telling someone. You know, they say, well, things are going so good. Now, let me tell you what our, our pastor did this past week. He came in and God spoke to him, supposedly. Oh, wait a minute. God speaks to me, too. Because I'm speaking to you about God. Mm -hmm. well, you could be. They told Jesus, well, he's got a demon. Mm -hmm. Well, no one can do these things without God being with them. Let's check them out. And then they wanted to stone them. That's how the devil is so crafty. When you hear something that goes contrary to the word of God, or contrary to living for God, do what Jerry took here. Be careful. Don't hang around with him too much. I've known Jerry a long time. I knew him when he was just a young man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now that's exactly right. <laughs> You're just about as old as I am. We are the two pillars in this church. <laughs> But that's how old we are. Uh, uh, to, to a lost one. Romans is a book all, listen to this. Romans is a book about Jesus. Do you agree? Yes. Amen. To be re revealed, preached, explained, and received. The natural mind cannot receive the things of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Their foolishness to But once they open the door, light comes in. Remember I last week? Light turned, the light goes on. I had my light switch in. I have a whole lot of <coughs> stuff I want to share with you. And I don't think, I don't know. I hope I live long enough. It will bring to believers eternal life. All right. Now I gave you a handout. As you go along, it says the Romans wrote, Roman road, and uh, we've gone through seven days so far. I'm not even going to ask you to raise your hands to see if you read it. You'll know if you read it. And uh, just for example, I'm just about done. Uh, the Bible says, number one, and this wasn't, this was found on the third day, uh, 323. For all, say all, all, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And when I talked to an individual one time, well, I've always been a Christian. No, you haven't. You were born into sin from Adam. Jesus came and he gave you life and more abundantly. Amen? Amen. If you received him. If you didn't receive him, you know, someone says, well, I, I, I believe this way. Okay, well, I, I don't want to argue with you. Because if I can talk you out of that position, someone else is going to come along. And the third may say, no, you got to go this way. you got to do this. you got to do that. There is nothing you have to do but believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he will open the door and come in and sup with you and you with him. It's not a McDonald's or Burger King philosophy. A drive-thru. Give me something just for today. No, you've got to live this out. You've got to dig in. Someone said, how do you get these secrets? I get up early in the morning. And Janice says, don't you bother me. <laughs> she does her studying at another time. You don't have to get up at four in the morning. Or three. Or five. Just get up. <laughs> Amen. 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 Number two, Romans 5 8. But God demonstrates uh, his own love towards us 
and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for you. That blows my mind. Why would he die for me? I rejected him. Uh, I did make a commitment. I'll have to say that as a young man. Once you make a commitment, God is going to be on your heels to get you to go full time. I used to be re a recruiter for the National Guard. And uh, I, would, I would talk to people about, you know, staying in the military, the benefits. Oh, no, this is... I didn't say it was going to be easy, but if you stay the course, there are benefits. It's the same thing with staying the course with Jesus. There are benefits far away the struggles you will have. Do you believe that? I believe that. Amen. God was, he's on your side. Jesus said, the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Yes. Say it out loud. Steal, kill, and destroy. He's against you. God's on your side. So if you get Jesus on your side and God on your side, you got to be. That's your retirement <coughs> plan. Because money, the cash of this world, could go down in a moment. So some of you that are hiding it under the mattress, <laughs> don't count on it, because they're already talking about it. they want to change the currency. They're going to put a number on your forehead or something. All right. The last one. And let's turn to Romans chapter, uh, what is it? 10. Chapter 10. Chapter 10. And when you're in there, say amen. Some of you are pretty fast. Uh, chapter 10, starting at verse 8, Paul's preaching to his brethren. You're preaching to your brethren in Ironwood, in Vesper, Wakefield, Guile, wherever. And so I got good news. And what is that? Well, Jesus is coming back for one thing. Jesus said, when you see all these things happening, uh, Matthew 24, Luke 13, he said, know that the end is near. When, it doesn't mean you're going to look, destroy the earth, but things are coming that you're going to have to be able to deal with, and that's why I'm telling you, you put on the helmet of salvation, chapter 6 of Ephesians, and have your mind solid in the things of God. Amen? Amen. Oh, this is good. Jerry, we're going out in a blaze. <laughs> you and I. Whenever I had to have the, the Gideons in, I always asked for Jerry. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, I just loved his spirit. I loved his heart. Some that would come in and I, you know, they meant well. And they tried to get us all saved. We're saved. I'm preaching the gospel. If you don't accept Jesus, you know what's going to happen. You're not going to heaven. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Do you agree? Yeah. Yes. All right. I'm glad you do. Okay. Let's read starting at verse 8. What does it say then? The word is near you and even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith in which we preach. That if you will, now listen to this is so powerful. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be what? Saved. Saved. Saved from what? Saved from the corruption in this world. This world is passing away. You will be saved. Well, then what do I do? I got to join a church? No. Continue to get into that word and ask God to transform you. Do whatever he has to do. Surrender your life. Give your life to him. You will be drawn to the things of God. And then you would want to find others of like mind. That's where the church comes in. That's why when you see a new person come in, don't attack them. Say out to the glory of God. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord. Uh, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, 
And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You have to have that act of faith. And you believe you heard the story you heard. You know what brings you to the Lord of God? It is the love of God that brings you to repentance. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 2. The love of God. I mean, I was in that UPS truck. No one told me, you got to repent. There was nobody there but me. You didn't have to tell me I was a sinner. I knew I was a sinner. You don't have to tell me. If you don't repent of those sins, which one? Do you know what I did when I was 12? No, you don't. And I'm not telling you. <laughs> For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. They both need Jesus Christ. They're not saved because they're a Jew. They're saved because they believe in the Messiah, Jesus Christ. You should. Oh, I should not going to try to say it. Yeshua Mashiach. Yeshua Mashiach. And I'm a Jew. Figure that out. She can say it better than me. Oh, thank you, Lord. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. For there's no distinction between uh, the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto uh, to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of, of the Lord shall be saved. Do you agree? Amen. Say amen. 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 Live it out. Now, how many of you are married and you got your sweetheart a Valentine present? Anybody here? You're not married. Are you married, Amy? Oh, you are. Did you buy him a present? A card. A card? Yeah. You've got to get chocolates. <laughs> chocolates really impress us. So I'm like, Janice, a box of chocolates. Did <laughs> <laughs> Dave bought some? Well, no, I'm like, amen. I have a little store. Just amen for chocolate. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I waited until they had the half price sale at Walmart. And so, and so I had to taste them to make sure they were okay for her to eat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did, did you notice one was missing? Yeah. <laughs> They're so merciful. And so, since then, every morning, I take the box. She still has two more pieces if she don't eat them soon. <laughs> and I set it up and I set a coffee cup on there. So when she gets up, she's ready for the my heart is with you, Juliet. <laughs> well, praise God. I hope you got something out of this. Yeah, amen. I'm having fun. Oh, yeah. And if you think I'm weird, that's okay, because I think you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wake me up. I'm going all the way for Jesus. Yeah. Are you going all the way for Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And if the music department will come, I'll read the benediction, and then... Uh, or I do something else and they say that's not the old man. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, may you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.